Hello again and welcome. If you are coming to this video for the first time and not having seen any of my previous videos, I encourage you, if you don't watch all of them, to at least watch the one that comes directly before this, in which I uh, altered the node color in a network map and network X by simply making it, uh, it so that anything in our data who showed up as a person who was a male received a blue node and anyone who showed up in our data who was female received a red node. And then if we run this, we see this uh, right here, just as we did before. Now, what we're going to do in this video is something a little bit uh, different. We're going to keep all the same information that we have. But what I want to do is I want to change uh, the node size uh, that's represented in this network map. So the way in which I can do that is in our draw our uh, function, I can pass another argument. And I'm going to pass node size equals, I'm just going to set this to 200 just to demonstrate my point. And when we do that, you can't tell that there's a huge difference, but let's go ahead and change this to 2000 and you will. Boom. Now you have very, very large nodes. This is nice if you want to make a, a kind of standardized node size for your entire network map. But oftentimes when you're drawing network maps, especially with social networks, you want to uh, represent someone's uh, importance in a network map, not just by cluster or edges connected to them, but the number of times that they appear in the data. And this is going to be a frequency uh, attribute. And the nice thing about Network X is that we don't actually have to pass any new uh, data in our XML file to do this. We can simply code it in in our Python script. So the way in which I'm going to do this is I'm going to do something very similar to what I did with gender colors. Uh, if you don't remember, uh, what Ginger's colors di uh, did was it essentially provided us a list of colors that corresponded to a person's place in our node list. So if we print gender colors, we will see just that. Uh, down here in the bottom, we see blue, 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 red, blue, red, red. And the reason why that don't they don't align perfectly with these individuals here always is because um, once uh, an, uh, a person is stored in network X as a node, uh, they are only going it's only going to happen once. And this is going to be the first occurrence of that, uh, that person being entered into our, uh, network X data. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to, uh, create something kind of similar and we're going to create a new object called node sizes. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow pretty much exactly what we did last time. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by saying, total names dot count. We're going to call the count function and it's going to count the number of times someone appears in a node uh, in our node list. And what I want to do is I want to multiply that by a hundred so that each time they appear, they receive a node size of a hundred and each additional time it is multiplied by a hundred. So if a person appears once, they'll receive a node size of 100. If they appear twice, it'll be 200, etc. And what we're going to do is we want that to happen for node in g dot nodes, and that's going to allow us to actually call that nodes function, which is going to return a list. So now when we run this, I'm going to block this out for right now. Actually, I won't, I won't bother. Now when we run this, what we'll see, let's print off. Um, oops, let me close this. Get rid of that. So I can show you what's exactly happening. So I'm going to be print off gender color and I'm going to print off node sizes. So now what we have here is well, gender colors. Sorry. There we go. And now what we have here is our data set up perfectly as we want to see it. Each of these corresponding to each of these other pieces of data in our data set. So how do we take that information and actually render it in a network map? Well, all we have to do, and this is what's really nice here, all we have to do is pass that same node size argument. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that argument equal to node sizes, our list. So anytime it, uh, it encounters a person in that uh, in our data, it's going to assign the correct uh, node size to them. So the zero person in zero position in our G nodes will receive the node size that is corresponding to uh, the node sizes list at zero position, which is going to align up perfectly for us. 
So when we create this network map, we see that individuals have in fact received different sizes. Jerry, it is quite clear, appears most frequently. He has received the, uh, the largest node. And let's just go ahead and demonstrate how this works by, let's give Lil and Jilly multiple relationships. I'm just gonna copy and paste this a whole bunch of times so that in our data, they should look a lot larger. And here you go. You see Lily and Jill's nodes now being much larger than they were before. So this is one of the easiest ways to actually alter a node size. You can either do it where you standardize it and just simply declare a uh, set that node size argument equal to a set number, or you can pass a more sophisticated way uh, of making a more nuanced map by setting node size equal to a list. And that list is going to correspond to our G nodes list. So I hope you've found this somewhat useful for uh, changing node size based on frequency. Uh, I look forward to talking with, with you in the next video. And we're going to start uh, doing some more complex things with Network X. Not strictly mapping out data, but how to interact with data in the Python script. So thank you for listening.